Hey, good morning, Coastal family. My name is Kimberly. I'm Coastal's online campus pastor, and it's a joy to be with you this morning. We're excited to worship with you today, and we're excited for what the Lord is going to share with you today. If you aren't aware, we have been in the midst of a series called One Word. It's a series where we're leaning into what does it mean to see this year through the lens of drawing us nearer to the Lord, drawing us closer to Him, growing our relationship with Him. And so maybe He's been laying a word on your heart. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't hesitate to go back and check out our previous messages. You can check them out on our VB Coastal app or our website where you can see a little bit of more of an explanation of what it means to choose your word for this year. Today, Pastor Hank's got a great message where he's going to continue that uh, idea. So we're excited for that, and we're excited for everything that's happening here at Coastal, and we don't want you to miss out on a thing. So make sure that you have downloaded that VB Coastal app. We also say here at Coastal that life groups are the heartbeat of our church. And so we want to make sure that you're connected well here at Coastal. If you haven't already engaged in a life group, this is a perfect time for you to start doing just that. And so if you are interested in starting a, in a life group, researching a life group, you can find a tab on our app there that says uh, find a group and you can browse through all of the options or you can simply text the number in the chat, text the word life group and let us know and we'll help you connect to a life group. But right now we are excited to dive into a time of worship. I pray that the Lord meets you in whatever space that you're in and I hope that you will actively engage in this beautiful time where we get to worship the Lord and hear what it is that he's sharing with us. Let's get started. How are we doing today? That's awkward. You guys ready to give him praise? Let's do it. We're gonna stand, we're gonna worship together. Let's do this. All the glory yours this morning, Lord. Amen.
we do not say that name lightly this morning, knowing the power that resides, but above all else, Lord, the, the chance that we have to be able to be in the presence of that power today. God, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would lead and guide us this morning in our time that we gather, but Lord, on the power that raised you from the grave, God, we call upon that today to be our true worship leader here and now, our leader today, that you would be the one that's speaking directly to us. We are grateful for the opportunity and the chance. Thank you for your adoption. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and the chance, Lord. We love you through faith and wonder, through all that you are, Lord, just simply because of who you are, Lord, you are worthy of the praise that we bring today, both in song, but also in study, Lord. So we lift your name on high today. In your name we pray, amen, amen. All right, let's have a seat. Yes, Lord. Amen. Good morning. It's okay to clap. That was a great worship set. That's right. The Lord is worthy. Amen. It is good to be with you all this morning. Welcome. Happy Sunday. My name's Kimberly. I'm Coastal's online campus pastor. And I'm Kurt, one of the Life Group leaders here. So great to see you in person. Great to see you online. And how about a quick shout out to the parking lot crew because, Amen. whoa. <laughs> uh, right. And on a day like this, a chilly day, mm -hmm. you want some coffee. And so if you are joining <laughs> us for the first time, Make sure you have one of these. Hope you stop by the Connection Center on the way in. If you didn't on the way out, this gets you a free coffee, a free pastry. Those of you who've been here a few times, definitely stop on by because on a day like this, you can need it. The new drink, Honey Almond Latte. Ooh. I tried it this morning. It is like, whoa. Oh, and also the Eggnog Donut, which may, you know, like, whether you're a fan of eggnog or not, it may sound, and it's gluten-free, just because it sounds healthy, it may be kind of weird. It is, whoa. It, it, it is awesome. That's awesome. Hey, if you haven't already done so, would you take a moment and download the VB Coastal app? This is something that we talk about regularly, but it's because it's where we have the most information readily available to you. You can make sure that you're following along on live notes. You can see all of the upcoming events. There's also our connection card on there, and that's the fastest place for you to update information if you've had an address or phone number change. But if you have never given us any information, we promise not to hound you. We just want to receive some information so that we can connect you as best as we can can here at Coastal, whether it is through a life group or a, a serving opportunity, or if you simply have a prayer request for us that we can pray with you on, that is the perfect place for you to do that. And on Tuesday morning as a staff, we will gather and pray over each and every one of those prayer requests. And so that connection card on the VB Coastal app, that's the place to start today. Yeah, I mean, there's just a ton of information there. Like, you can find out what is going on in the life mm -hmm. of our church, and there's a lot going on. So yeah, you definitely yeah. want to just scroll through the app, go down to the very bottom and look for events, and you can see, like, we have uh, our starting point classes. They are starting up. And speaking of points, we have a blood drive. Oh. That was my attempt at a point. Well done. Needles. Got it. Blood drive. <laughs> When you have to connect the dots like that, I'm not sure. Failed transition <laughs> there. But the blood drive tomorrow. And also men's breakfast, uh, the men's women's Bible study. Yeah, men, make some noise about that breakfast coming up. Yes. So, but the point is there is so much going on in the life of our church. Use the app to get plugged in. All of the events there. That is right. One of the events we want to make sure is at the forefront of your minds is every year in January, we get to host an annual business meeting. And this is a time where we recap kind of what God has done here at Coastal over the past year and where he's taking us into this next year. But it's a fun meeting where we get to see all sorts of updates on ministries and all of that. Also in that meeting, we vote on the next year's budget. And if you are one that likes to come prepared, then I wanna let you know that on the banner at the top of our website, or there's paper copies out in the lobby, you can see our proposed budget for the year so that you can come with any questions or ready to vote on that. But we hope that you will mark your calendars Thursday, January 26th at 7 p.m. right here in this space. Hey, we want to thank you for your generosity, your continued giving. Uh, it really helps us to do what we do here, to go out into the community to make more and better followers of Christ. And there are a number of ways that you can give. You can check on the screen. You can text. You can give online. You can also give in person. But again, thank you for your continued generous support. 
Right, we are continuing this series we're calling One Word this morning. So let's welcome Pastor Hank to bring our message. Wow. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Everybody warm? Reach over and touch the hand of, of the person next to you and, and make sure their hands are warm. If not, just, you know, hold them up and warm them up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hey, I want to start with a fun game. Is that okay? Everybody likes a fun game? I want to start with a fun game. I want you to try and guess the winner of a contest. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures of some dogs. And you have to tell me which of these dogs you think won the ugliest dog contest. All right? So here we go. First of all, the first entry is this dog. Too cute, huh? All right, let's see the next. Oh, see? That dog's so ugly, it buried its head in the sand. All right. Wow. It's got an attitude, that dog. That dog's camouflage there. All right, what? Oh, look at that. That is a dog. Oh. Poor guy. Those dogs taking a selfie, too funny. Oh boy. That dog is a candidate for sure. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh my goodness. Oh, something not right about that. Ah. Oh. So this is the winner. The dog's called Mr. Peanut. And uh, he or she, I don't know, won the, uh, the ugliest dog contest. They actually have ugliest dog contests. And here's the thing about Peanut. We could, we've been talking about change the past few weeks uh, in New Year's resolution and so on. But uh, Peanut doesn't want to change. In fact, while the owner doesn't want Peanut to change, why? Because he has such notoriety. He's so famous. He won $1,500 in this contest and won a free trip to New York City to, to appear on the Today Show because he won the Ugly Dog contest. And even if he wanted to change, is it possible for this dog to change? Where would you even start? I don't even know. I can't look at it anymore. It's too creepy. So we're, uh, we've been in a series. Um, it's called uh, One Word. And it's all about, instead of making New Year's resolutions that we tend to abandon, you know, after a few weeks or months, that, that we're praying about. We're focusing on what's one thing, just one thing we think God wants to do in our lives this year, 2023, and then choose a word to, to summarize that one thing that God might do in our lives. And some of you have already chosen your word. You've you know, been praying about it. And, and here are some examples, uh, some people who have um, chosen their word. This person chose self-control, and they said this. Um, I had several words I've been bouncing around, but I think self-control is my one word for this year. And by the way, self-control is not one word, but it is hyphenated, so we'll allow it. They said, I've had several confirmations. I know what I need to do and what God wants me to do, but I need self-control to do it and not slip back into old habits. Like Brian Ashcraft said last Sunday, don't give up and use the excuse, that's just who I am and have always been that way. So self-control is uh, an example of, of somebody's word for this year. This person chose the word rest. And they said, my one word is rest. This is a word the Lord has been teaching me. My desperate need for physical rest, spiritual rest, and mental rest. And then this person chose the word intentional. Uh, intentional, they say, with time and how it's spent. Intentional with relationships. Intentional with investments in my family life. Um, now, there's actually a book out there called My One Word. It's written by our own Brian Ashcraft's brother Mike Ashcraft and in it they have the top 10 most picked words for the new year 
to, to, to focus on. And here, here are the top 10 words. If you're, if you're still praying and looking for your one word, trust, patience, love, discipline, focus, uh, faith, surrender, peace, listen, joy. So, I'm praying that you find just the right word to summarize what God wants to do in your life in 2023. And uh, along those lines, we've been talking about how God works with us to change us for the better. And one of the most compelling images in the Bible about how God does that is is the image of a potter who's working with some clay. You know, you've got the potter's wheel, you've got the clay, and the, 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 you know, the expert uh, potter is spinning that wheel and, and molding, shaping the clay. And so what I want to do today is I want to read a verse, uh, a passage from the Old Testament that kind of describes this uses as a metaphor to describe how God works with us to change us for the better. And then I just want to point out some ways that God works with us and shapes us into what he wants us to be. So this is uh, Jeremiah, the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. It says this, uh, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. And there I will give you a message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. And then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like the clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hand. That's the Lord. And one of the things we can learn, I think, from the potter shaping the clay is that God is shaping you into what he wants you to be, but it's not an easy process. Amen? Amen. It's not an easy uh, process. Now, in this metaphor, the potter stands for what or who? For God. The potter is God, and the clay is who? So, uh, it's, it's, it's not an e- easy process. Now, I have here uh, some Play-Doh. And it's been a while since I've worked with, with Play-Doh. But, you know, Play-Doh's fun. You can, you know, you can shape it. You can squeeze it. You can mold it. Right? You can eat it, I guess. Somebody, t- somebody in the band said that their daughter plays with it and eats they can't keep her from eating it and he said it tastes real salty so I guess he the dad's eating it too so <laughs> but um don't I don't recommend you eating it but uh it's fun to be the potter but if you're the clay this is not an easy process being you know put shoved and mashed and stretched you know if you're the clay you're not saying "Ooh, that feels good this is like a massage you know could you a little to the left you know it's like ow what ow what do you, why you know so it's not an easy process and part of the reason it's not an easy process is because change in general is not easy nobody nobody really likes change I guess except a baby and so I want to I mention three, three reasons why change is so hard. And the first reason is, is because I've lived with these things in my life so long, I've become used to them. I've become comfortable with them. You know, if you have character defects or weaknesses, issues in your life, it's not like that they happened overnight. You know, it takes, it takes weeks, months, years, and you live with those things after a while, and you, it just becomes kind of who you are, and you get used to it. Uh, it's like the guy who went to the psychiatrist's office, and, and he said, you know, I, I think I'm a dog. And the psychiatrist said, well, how long have you thought you, you were a dog? And he said, well, since I was a puppy. <laughs> so... You tend to get used to these things over time. Even though, you know, an issue in your life might be self-defeating, 
we might know that there's certain habits in our lives that are not good for us, and yet, on the other hand, uh, these things are things we're comfortable with. So change is hard because you've lived with things for so long, but they also have a, a reward. I don't know if you ever thought about that. The things we do, even the, the, the bad habits that we have, we, why do we do them? Because there's a benefit, because there's a, there's a payoff. There's, there's a, a reward to them. You, you take somebody, for instance, who's a, a, a workaholic. What's the payoff? What's the reward? Well, they get lots of pats on the back at work. Uh, promotions, bonuses. Uh, that's the short-term benefit, but the long-term consequences of, you know, somebody who's a workaholic is maybe they lose their health, maybe they lose a spouse, maybe they lose their kids, maybe, you know, they lose their self-esteem eventually. But, but so, 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 so there's that. There's a payoff, and that's why we do those kinds of things. Change is hard because of that. And then change is hard because the enemy discourages us to change. Have you noticed that? Amen. You know, you come to church and you hear a message like this about how God can help you change for the better. And you, you, maybe you start to get hopeful and start to have some faith. And, but by the time you leave and go get in your car, you know, the, the enemy is whispering in your ear and saying, you can't change. Who do you think you are? You've, you've tried before. This is just another failure, you know? And, and here's what the Bible, the Bible says two things about that. First thing is this. The Bible says that the enemy, the devil, is a liar. And the second thing that the Bible says is that God wants to help us Amen. and will help us. In fact, look at this scripture, one of my favorite, Philippians 4.13. It says, I can master anything with the help of Christ who gives me strength. In fact, let's all read that out loud together. Are you ready? I can master anything with the help of Christ who gives me strength. Now, I'll tell you what, that might be a good verse to, to write out on a three by five card and put it you know, in your car, the dashboard of your car and your, your mirror at home uh, to remind you of the promise. But you've got to decide which one are you gonna believe, the devil or the Lord. And the truth is, you can change with God's help, but it's not easy. So God's shaping us in what he wants us to be. It's not an easy process. And the, the second thing I would say is that you've got to listen to the Lord. You've got to be listening. Jeremiah was listening. Look what the, the scripture, Jeremiah 18, 1 says. It says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord Go down to the potter's house. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. God speaks to his children because he loves us. Amen. God speaks to us because he cares about what's going on in our lives. God speaks to us because he wants to give us guidance. He speaks to us because he wants to give us direction. He speaks to us because he wants us to help help us to be better you know, spouses if we're married, better parents if we have kids, better friends. God speaks to us, but we've got to listen. Jesus, when he taught, would often say something like this. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. And he's not talking here about physical listening. He's talking about spiritual listening. He's talking about anticipating that, that God is speaking to to you he has a word for you an, an encouragement direction uh co word of comfort whatever and when god speaks into your life it's something worth hearing isn't it Amen. this this uh past few weeks i've been of course i've been asking everybody in the congregation to pray and think about what's one word that can summarize what god wants to do in your life you know and and choose your one word for 2023 and, and let that be your focus this year as God works in your life to make a difference. And uh, I've been praying about my one word. Had a couple of words that I've sort of been wrestling through. And, and then um, this week, I finally got my, my word. And here's how it happened. So uh, in the middle of the night, Tuesday night, I heard a noise in our house. 
And uh, so I, I woke Donna up and I said, go find out what that is. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just, any, any of you husbands do that? That's, that's bad. Uh, no, no. I, so I heard this noise and so I thought, what is that? What's, What's going on? Somebody broken into our house. What is happening? So I'm walking through the house, and I'm looking around all the corners. You know how you do. And, uh, and, and finally, all of a sudden, the doorbell rings. Now, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, what is going on? Well, here's the crazy thing that I found out later. When it gets really cold, for some reason, our doorbell rings. By itself, randomly. I don't know why, but it's creepy when it's four o'clock in the morning. You hear something, and then the doorbell rings. But what I had heard in the in the bed was the doorbell was ringing. I looked out, and there's nobody out. There. Well, Jack Frost, he's the only one. But anyway, so so I'm up. I'll, oh, it's the doorbell. I'm going to go back to bed. Uh, nothing I can do right now. And I head back to bed. I look at my, uh, look at, see what time it is. It's 4.44. Now, God and I have this arrangement. And whenever all the numbers line up, I've got to stop what I'm doing and pray. Uh, or if it's at night, I've got to read my Bible. That's just the arrangement. Because God, what that means is the Lord has something he wants to say to me. He's... He's speaking somehow, some way. So, so I grabbed my phone and uh, opened it to um, you version of the Bible. Some of you all have that on your phone. Well, anyway, every day they, they put up a, a different verse. And at 4.44 in the morning, they put, they put up this verse here from, uh, this is from Habakkuk. For as the waters fill the seas, the earth will be filled with the awareness of the glory of the Lord. And I thought, how cool is that? I mean, I don't know if I, I don't even think that was in the Bible until this Tuesday because I'd never seen it. But it just occurred to me, that word awareness jumped out at me. Awareness of the glory of the Lord. I thought, how cool. And to think that, you know, as the waters fill the sea, think how much water is in the sea, the earth will be filled with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. And so it occurred to me, ah, oh, that word awareness, that's my word. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, is that my word? Great, thanks, good night. And I went to bed. And so that's my word, uh, awareness of the glory of the Lord. Isn't that cool? So that's my word. Now, I'm praying that God will speak to you, maybe not in such a crazy way as he did me, um, but that you'll, you'll find a word, a word will come to you through the scripture or maybe through what we're talking about here on Sunday morning, but there'll be some word that God will confirm that this is the word and this is the way God's going to be working in your life, in your heart, in your soul in 2023. That's, that's what he did uh, for me. And uh, by the way, next week, <clears throat> next week, we're going to be talking about how God speaks to us. So if you ever struggled with, you know, does God really speak? Does he have a voice? And if so, what does that voice? Anyway, we're going to talk about that, how God speaks to us. So, so um, anyway, that'll be great. Hope you'll be here for that. Um, Jeremiah was listening. And my question is, are you listening to the Lord? Do you have ears to hear? And Jeremiah didn't just listen, by the way. He obeyed. Look at this scripture. He obeyed. It says, this is the Lord that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house. And so, he says, I went down to the potter's house. Now, how do you think, think about if you were Jeremiah, and God tells you to go to the potter's house. Do you think that he felt great about going down to the potter's house. Don't you think there must have been super inconvenient? I'm sure he wasn't planning already on going down to the potter's house. I'm sure he had to change his plans. I'm sure he had his agenda. And then God comes along and says, mm-mm, I've got something much more important. You're going to have to forget about your agenda and adopt my agenda. And so he probably didn't feel good about it. 
But God said go, and he went. And that's the second thing I want to talk about how God shapes us. He's shaping you, but focus on doing good instead of feeling good. Focus on doing good in, instead of feeling good. In other words, if you do the right thing, if you do the right thing sooner or later, your feelings are going to catch up with your doings. But <clears throat> if you wait until you feel like changing, chances are you never will. Now, I, I give an example uh, of a, another guy who goes to a psychiatrist. There's a lot of guys going to psychiatrists in, in my message today. Anyway, this guy goes to the psychiatrist, and he tells him, he says, look, I've had it with my wife. She makes my life miserable. I'm going to divorce her. The psychiatrist gets an idea. He says, all right. He says, um, but if you really want to hurt her, here's what you'll do. He says, listen, the next 30 days, treat your wife like she's a queen. I mean, do everything for her, love her, fix her breakfast in bed, uh, give her a foot massage, that's what she likes, take her out to a fancy restaurant, write her uh, poems, sing her love songs, if that's what she, you know, whatever it is, get her jewelry, if that's, for every day, for the next 30 days, just do something amazing, out of the ordinary, just love her, tell her how much you love her. 30, and then at the end of the 30 days, you tell her, I'm leaving you, I'm divorcing you, and then walk out, and that'll really hurt her. And the psychiatrist looks at the guy and says, what do you think? And the guy says, okay, I'm going to do it. So <clears throat> 30 days go by, the guy comes back to the psychiatrist, and uh, is, the psychiatrist says, well, he says, did you did you?" Do what I told you to do? And he said, yeah. He said, man, he said, I treated her like a queen for the past 30 days. And the psychiatrist said, well, uh, so are you going to divorce her now? And the guy said, divorce her? Why would I want to divorce her? I'm married to a queen. <laughs> and the point is this, that, that his feelings changed because of his actions he did what husbands ought to do. He, he, he treated his wife like a queen, and that rekindled the feelings inside of him. And so then he felt like he was married to, to, a, to, to a queen. And, and the point of that is, <clears throat> excuse me, the point is that, that uh, how many of you ever heard that phrase, fake it until you make it? Let me give you another way or different way to say that. It's easier to act your way into a feeling than it is to feel your way into an action. Let me say that again. It's easier to act your way into a feeling than it is to feel your way into an action. In other words, if you will act a certain way, eventually your feelings will catch up. But if you wait for your feelings... To, to cause you to want to act a certain way, you may never act in that way. And so God's shaping you, but focus on doing good, not feeling good. And then this last uh, learning, I think, from, from Jeremiah's uh, uh, scripture is that God is shaping you, but focus on progress and not perfection. Focus on progress and not perfection. Look at, look at what Scripture says. It says the pot he was shaping from the clay was what? The pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. Did you know that we're all marred pots? All of us are. None of us are perfect. What was it Jesus said to the, to the crowd who had gathered to... Throw stones at the woman caught in the act of adultery. He said, let the one who's never sinned cast the first stone. And nobody could. And nobody can here either. Why? Because we're all marred to some degree. Maybe you've heard the story of the water bearer in India. Um, his job was to carry water from the stream to his employer's house. So he had a, he had a wooden 
pole he would put across his shoulder. And on each end of the pole, he, he had um, a pot, right? And he would carry the pots down to the stream. He would, he would fill them up with water, both of them. And then he would walk back to his employer's house and, and, uh, and, and give him the water. Now, one of his pots was cracked, right? And so by the time he would get the water and by the time he would walk all the way to the master's house, about half the water in that pot would leak out on the ground on the way up. Now, that, that went on for a couple of years. And finally, the cracked pot spoke to the water bearer. And the cracked pot said to the water bearer, he said, I just want to apologize to you. He said, I want to apologize because I'm ashamed of myself with this crack. He said, y your effort is never realized because... I spill half my water on the way to the master's house every time you use me to carry water. And the water bearer said to the cracked pot, he said, I want you to look. He, he's walking from the river back to the employer's house. He said to the cracked pot, he said, I want you to look on your, on your side of the path. Notice all those flowers, all the flowers on your side, no flowers on the side where the pot has no crack. He said, that's because I'm fully aware of the flaw in you as a pot. And I've anticipated that by planting flower seeds all along the side of the path, knowing that each time I would carry water from the stream to my employer's house, you would water those seeds along the way. And it's because of you that I'm able to take flowers to my employer's house and make his house a beautiful place. Now, what's the moral of that story? The moral is that we're all a bunch of crack pots. <laughs> but the point is that God knows that and, and he still uses us anyway. Amen? And hopefully we can take comfort in that, that none of us are perfect. We're all marred to, to some degree, but God knows that, and he uses us. But now, and, and this is the important part, God loves us so much. He loves us enough, way too much, to leave us the way we are because he knows what we can become. And that's important to remember. Yes, he can use us because none of us are perfect. On the other hand, God loves us too much to, to let us stay that way. And he wants us to help, to help us change for the better. And, and, and so that's, that's what I think Jeremiah is trying to get across in this particular scripture. Now, when it comes to doing pottery... I've had a little experience growing up, working with Play-Doh. I used to be a pretty good Play-Doh shaper back in my day. You know, and you try to make something with Play-Doh, you know, you try to make this or that, and sometimes you just get frustrated, right? And you can't make it to what you want it to be, so what do you do? You decide, okay, I'm, what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a snake. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it's easy. Anybody can make a snake, right? Here's the thing. God's shaping you, and he's molding you, and he's, he's making you, but you're not a snake. And so he's going to take more time. He's going to use more pressure. Right? And, and, and look at the scripture. It says, the pot, the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seems best to him. The NLT version, look at this. It says, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped, so he did what? He crushed it into, into a lump of clay again, and he started over. What if, what if that's what God has to do with your life? 
crush it and start over. I imagine that the potter's not very gentle, you know, as he's shaping the clay. But sometimes that's exactly what it takes. And I was thinking if the clay had feelings and could talk, what do you think it might say when he decides it's not measuring up and he's going to have to remold it? You know, I think the clay would say, please, you know, stop. I, this is too painful. P Mr. Potter, can't you lower your standards? Can't you leave some of these character flaws in me? Can't I just stay the way I am? And, and I guess if you're making a snake, it doesn't matter. But to God, it does matter. And he's making a masterpiece with you. So what does that mean? That means that there may be some pain involved in the shaping of us. Some of you here in this room, some of you connecting online, are on the potter's wheel right now and maybe it hurts and maybe you're tempted to pray, you know, God, couldn't you just lower your standards? This is, this is too painful. Can you just let these habits go uncorrected? But I want you to understand, you're in the hands of a master craftsman the God who created you. And he's forming you into a masterpiece. And just as we said a minute ago, God loves you way too much to leave you the way you are because he knows what you can become. So don't ask him to lower his standards. Don't ask him to, to, to stop that process, which can be and often is painful because you matter too much to him. And that's the lesson of the powder's wheel. So maybe this is our prayer, and maybe you just bow your head with me now and pray this prayer with me. Lord, would you just mold me into who you want me to be? Shape me, God. I want to submit to you, but I also ask you to help me in the process. Strengthen me, because this is a hard, hard time I'm going through. and I need your comfort. I need to know you're here. I need to know you're with me. Thank you, God. I pray those, those hands that are shaping me would also bring comfort and reassurance of your love. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. We're going we're gonna to sing with the praise team, and then I'm going to come out in just a second and close our service with a word of prayer.
Look at this promise from the Lord. God who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task with you is finally finished. Amen? You believe in that? That's a promise from the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this promise. Thank you that we can count on you. Thank you for your grace. That's what we need, Lord. As you help us to grow, as you come alongside of us and make us more like your son, Jesus. We're grateful for that. And we pray these things in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Another great message in this series. I pray that the Lord is speaking clearly to you. And if nothing else, I hope you hear today that the Lord loves you so much. He loves you so much. He's not going to leave you where he finds you. He wants to be your master artist, your sculptor, the one that is molding you into something beautiful. And so be encouraged today as you continue to lean into what it is the Lord is leading you through or into this year, in this new year. We would love to hear from you if you've got a word that he's speaking to you and we want to support and encourage you along the way. Hey, we're excited to worship again with you next week. We'll be in person and online at 9 and 11 a.m. We pray you have a blessed week.
Thank you.